Today we're looking at the top 5 worst cruise lines of all time, from totally unqualified captains, to corrupt dictatorships, and to failed cruise visions. This list got the worst of all. First off, we have the Mangyongbong 92, a cruise ship owned by none other than the North Korean government. See, North Korea's dictator Kim Il-sung had a ferry he used to smuggle 7 billion dollars worth of methamphetamine from North Korea into Japan with. The vessel was also used to kidnap and abduct over 700 Japanese citizens. But once they got exposed and banned from Japanese waters, they now had a passenger ferry with no purpose. The dictator was also so impressed by the recent success of cruising in the American market that he decided to transform the otherwise useless vessel into a luxury cruise ship. Here's how it turned out. After just a week of renovations, the cruise ship was launched in front of a festive crowd of inspired locals. But the onboard experience was not quite as glamorous. The owner's suite was made up of two squeezed bunk beds, and the standard cabin were just eight mattresses moving back and forth on the floor of a shared common room. The restrooms were non-functioning, with toilets overflowing and the sinks spewing a gooey brown substance, which passengers were reassured is safe to use. The onboard crew did however try their best, and they organized karaoke nights and even got a coffee machine to work. The cruise did end with a bang though, quite literally as a ship crashed into the pier on arrival. Needless to say, tourists did not return, and the dream of a North Korean cruise line were abandoned forever. Next up, and probably not quite as bad as the previous one, we have Easy Cruise, a budget-friendly Greek cruise line which might have gone a bit too far in their cost-saving measures. Easy Cruise was the logical addition to the company that was behind EasyJet and Easy Hotel, offering inexpensive, no-frills travel options. The idea was simple offer passengers the cabin for an extremely low price and charge for everything else. The cabins, often just 100 square feet with mattresses nearly lying on the floor, were a stark contrast to the industry standard of more than twice its size. The idea wasn't terrible, but here's the problem. While Easy Cruise was getting started, another cruise line, MSC Cruises, was offering similarly priced cruises on much bigger ships with food, entertainment, and more all included. Meanwhile, Easy Cruise was charging $25 for housekeeping, $15 for a towel, and more. Additionally, passengers hated the bright orange design of the ship so much that the company was forced to repaint the hull as well as the cabins several times. The business model relying on low entry prices struggled to gain traction as passengers were unwilling to pay for extra amenities on board. Within just a few years, the company was sold and eventually ceased operations. In third place, we have another terrible one, the MV Freewinds. This ship is still active today and might look normal from the outside. It has a nice pool, a theater, and other basic passenger amenities. The only problem is that it's owned by the Church of Scientology, a profit-making religious cult that has previously been convicted of conspiracy and fraud in the United States and abroad. The ship is considered the holiest place in Scientology, and cult members pay thousands to get on board to do something called auditing, a form of spiritual counseling. The ship is fully staffed by Scientology's paramilitary religious order, and when crew members initially join, they sign an employment contract for literally a billion years, with an incredible hourly wage of 42 cents. Dozens of ex-crew members reported being denied leaving, and when sharing their intention to leave, they were forced to do hard manual labor and were unjustly imprisoned for a month. Many passengers also reported being kidnapped by the crew when they refused to donate or announce their intention to escape the cult. So while Scientology celebrities like Tom Cruise are enjoying themselves at parties on board, crew and other guests are notoriously exploited by the secretive cult. Luckily, the ship has been in permanent dry dock since the pandemic due to failing numerous safety standards, and could potentially never sail again. Moving on to Fathom, the worst performing subsidiary brand of Carnival Cruises. The vision was simple offers social cruises that let passengers volunteer in developing countries. And Carnival tried this out with Fathom Cruises. They took an old ship and put it on trips from Florida to the Dominican Republic. 
There, passengers would spend a couple of days volunteering at local schools, cook for soup kitchens and more. Here is the only problem. People were unwilling to spend thousands of dollars to go work, and travel agents struggled immensely to sell those cruises. Within just a year, the cruise line was discontinued, and cruises were cancelled due to an extreme lack of demand. Lastly, arguably the worst cruise line ever, we have Epiriotiki Cruise Line, a Greek cruise operator popular in the 80s. Its twist, within just three tumultuous years in the early 90s, the company managed to sink not one, not two, but three cruise ships. The first incident was a shock, the second a disaster, but by the third it was clear that this wasn't just bad luck, it was a pattern of negligence. In one of the sinkings, the ship's officers and captain even snuck off the ship without telling anyone, and abandoned the vessel with hundreds still on board. Passengers were left without anyone organizing the evacuation, and the onboard guitarist had to step in and call for Mayday from the empty bridge himself. Making things worse, Epiriotiki never blamed its officers. In a bewildering move, they even rehired a captain that abandoned the ship and he continued to command vessels till his retirement. Epiriotiki's final act, an audacious attempt to rebrand and relaunch, as if its sinking ships were merely a minor setback. Unsurprisingly, this attempt sank faster than their ships, marking the end of what could be the most disastrous chapter in cruise line history. In the comments below, let us know which of these was the worst, and check out our full-length videos on each of the individual cruise lines linked below. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing, it really helps us out. Thanks, and as always, keep cruising.